All right, tonight, I mean last night, <laughs> not tonight, last night I was looking at uh, the headdress a little more, a little closer, and I found some details that I didn't see. Time to play with some clay. I realized I had too many ermine tails on this headdress. In the uh, photograph, there's only four on each side. And uh, so I'm making that adjustment now. And also there's a feather. You can barely see it. It's mostly by on the edge of the feather, but there's a feather hanging down uh, on each side too. So I'm gonna do that as well. Let's see, one, two, three. Let's get rid of some of these back here. Okay, that works better. Somebody asked me uh, in the comments last night on my video from yesterday how I got these two uh, horns symmetrical. And uh, what I did is I rolled them both out together on my cutting board and I tried to size them the same size. And that's how. It wasn't uh, anything more complicated than that. Um, and that's, yeah, that's it. So, that was how I did it. Okay, I'm going to put, uh, some, uh, conches, metal conches on, uh, his headdress instead of beadwork. I think it looks a little more interesting. The key is to make them all the same size. I'm just uh, putting a indent in the uh, conches. Make it look like the bottom edge is stitched and I'm gonna just put little tiny indents in the uh, bottom to make it look like stitching. Because I, I would think that he would have a, a leather base to the uh, front or the bottom part here. And that he would stitch maybe some red trade cloth on that. It just gives a finish to the edge. I don't want it perfectly formed because it would be something he would store in a pair of flesh to protect it and it would get deformed by being folded or 
however he has it in his uh, pair of flesh. You know how leather is it tends to get deformed over time. And this is an old headdress that he's wearing from his youth. What I'm building is a story, something for people who view the piece in the future. They'll link their own story about the uh, what they're seeing. All right. Now I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to do this fur texture and make it castable. All right. I think the best way to get a fur texture. Now that didn't work. I got to get this clay real soft so I can put this on here and I can use my sculpting tool to give it kind of a fur texture. I got to be careful. I don't want to make it too spiky because it will be hard to cast or make a mold of and clean in the wax stage so I'm going to be very careful with this. The nice thing about this uh, monster clay is that uh, it uh, it's hard, so it'll be easy to make a mold of. All right, I'm going to come back when I get this. Uh, I'll show you off and on what I'm doing this part because it's going to be kind of boring watching me do this all over the uh, headdress. So I know that the original photo of the... Uh, Headdress doesn't have feathers on it, but uh, I'm thinking of adding maybe three or four feathers on the top of this headdress just to add a look to it. Now, this is just a sketch feather. It's not the uh, actual feather, but uh, it gives you an idea what I'm thinking of. All right, I'm going to start working on this arm and uh, getting it uh, worked out. I'm thinking about how I'm going to finish off the base of this thing, too. I want it to uh, be a more free-flowing type of base. And I'm just going to try something here. might have to put an armature in that. What I want it to do is just look like it's just just not quite in focus It's the bottom part. I don't know how to explain that, but uh, anyway, that's what I'm thinking. I won't need to put an armature in it. I'm just doing a continuation of this uh, bottom area here. The reason I don't want to put an armature in it is because I want them to be able to cut this off and cast it separate. Yeah, I like the way that that looks. I just put uh, texture into it so that it uh, matches the uh, texture of the robe. And uh, it'll be a little harder tomorrow so I can work on it a little bit better. But uh, yeah, I like that. Okay. Now, there's a black stripe. 
that uh, is on the blanket. And I'm going to put that on now. I'm just outlining where it's going to go. Now I got a different I gotta do a different texture for the uh black stripe than I've got for the uh the robe itself. And I'm gonna do that with uh this serrated edge tool here. This may be hard for you to see. And uh but I'll try to make it as visible as I can. Now I know the texture that I just put in is very hard to see um, under this light and uh, this far away. But once this thing is uh, colored, it will show up. All right, I'm going to have to call it quits for today, and I'll come back tomorrow and work on this. Uh, and uh, I'll try to finish it up tomorrow. I think I can finish this tomorrow. What I want to do is scale my feathers to the uh, size of his head, which is two inches uh, from here to the top of his head. And uh, try to figure out what I'm going to put in his hand. All right, everybody, have a great night. And... Uh, I'll see you all uh, next time. Good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.